there was there's some people that were doing things back in the day like and one always one I always bring up is the catch wrestling pioneer uh, Farmer Burns. Legendary catch wrestler Martin Farmer Burns is remembered as one of the greatest grapplers of his era. He competed in thousands of documented matches, winning almost all of them, and captured world titles at middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight, despite never weighing more than 170 pounds. And he was he was actually uh, beating heavyweights back yeah. in the day. This is a this is a day where it wasn't just for the pin. Right. You could do submissions, and uh, people could also tap. Mm -hmm. This is rough, tough American martial art. Yeah, this is what what's now known as catch wrestling or catch as catch can. And there were a lot of submission holes that they had back in those days that are still super effective today. Farmer Burns served as a mentor and coach to wrestling icon Frank Gotch and is popularly known for a superhuman neck that allowed him to do a six feet hangman's drop without sustaining injury. Still, there are several lesser known facts about the fascinating life of the Dean of American Wrestling. Today we'll go through 10 things that you may not have known about Farmer Burns. Number 1. He wrestled a bear. Apparently, purebred grapplers have been wrestling bears for a long time. According to the Humble Independent, in 1895 Farmer Burns accepted an offer of $300 a week to tour the country and meet all comers. During the show in Burlington, Washington, Burns took on a bet to wrestle a young husky black bear. The Iowa wrestler won by a pin and collected the bet. Number 2. Champion Stick Puller Stick pulling is a sport in which the contestants sit facing each other, their feet placed together on a board and their hands grasping a stick. At the signal they start pulling. The one who is able to pull the other over the board is the winner. This was a popular sport during the 19th century, especially in the Midwest. Farmer Burns was a decorated stick pulling champion. One of his most impressive victories came on December 1912. According to an article by the Bridgeport Times, Burns was 51 years old when he defeated the then reigning champion Pete Reistoff for a bet of $2,500. Reistoff was 30 years old and weighed 302 pounds. Number 3. Family of Wrestlers Farmer Burns came from a family of wrestlers on his father's side and strongmen on his mother's. I'll read you an extract from Martin's mother's obituary dated November 10th, 1914. Mrs. Mary Burns, 85 years old, member of a family of famous Irish athletes and mother of Farmer Burns, former heavyweight catch-as-catch-can wrestler champion of the world, died Sunday at her home in Chicago. Deep pride was taken by Mrs. Burns in the athletic prowess of her famous son. She regarded his success as a legitimate inheritance from generations of the Blake family in Ireland from which she had descended. Ambition of the mighty farmer and her other children and grandchildren was fired by tales told by Mrs. Burns concerning deeds of the famous strongmen of the Blake line. She witnessed many of the farmer's most hard-fought battles on the mat. Many were the public tributes paid to her by the blunt-spoken champion of the world. The grandfather and father of Farmer Burns were both good wrestlers. The grandfather, known as Big Martin Burns, gained considerable reputation in Ireland and England a century ago. Farmer Burns and his wife Amelia were dedicated parents. Burns used to carry letters from his four children in his pocket. His daughters followed him to the mats like shadows and started trying holes on each other since babyhood. At ages 14 and 12, the two had been training like Spartans for years and were capable grapplers. His sons, Raymond and Charles, used to compete against each other in preliminary exhibitions at some of Burns' events. Wrestling makes men peaceable, said Farmer Burns, and is the only game in which two brothers can play without quarrel. Burns also encouraged his kids' musical inclinations, and they all became professional musicians. Burns himself was an avid Jews harp player, and his favourite tunes were old Irish jigs. Number 4. Nickname Burns found his passion for wrestling at age 7. He used to compete against older kids for penny bets. According to an article in the Chicago Tribune, he won his first purse of 15 cents aged 8 by defeating an 11-year-old named James McGrin. Outside the mat, he learned to overcome adversity early on. His father died when he was just 11 years old, and to help support his mother, brother and five sisters, he left school to work in a farm during the day and wrestle in the evenings. He engaged in farm work for seven years 
always developing himself physically and wrestling at every opportunity. In one occasion, Burns travelled to Chicago in charge of two carloads of hogs. According to an article from the Des Moines Register, after delivering the hogs, he strolled around the city and saw a poster proclaiming that Jack Karkeek and Evan Lewis, the original Strangler, were meeting all comers and offering $25 to anyone staying 15 minutes. Burns took on the offer and stayed with each of them in separate bouts. A comedian on the same stage that night referred to the overall Burns as a farmer, and Farmer Burns he was from that time on. Besides this encounter, Burns and Lewis had two famous matches in different occasions that resulted in one win for each, but that's a subject for another time. Number 5. Rough and Tumble Burns' focus was on grappling, but he never shied away from a good old rough and tumble fight. Very similar to modern mixed martial arts, but with less limitations, one of these fights took place when Burns was still a teenager. In an interview for the Quad City Times, Jim O'Neill briefly narrates what could possibly be Farmer Burns' first documented fight. Quote, When the railroad was being put through Dixon, there was a fellow on the work gang who had trained as a boxer and had a reputation of being able to beat anyone. But a neighbour of Martin's said he had a fellow who could thrash the railroad man and got hold of Martin, who was then just a kid. They hired a hall and the neighbour bet $75 on Martin. He and the railroad man went at each other. The first round they were pretty evenly matched, but after the second round, the railroad man had had enough. He wouldn't even come out of his corner, O'Neill recalled. I made a video narrating one of Farmer Burns' fights age 49 against boxing world champion Billy Patke. If you haven't watched it, the link is in the description. Number 6. Baseball Team Farmer Burns used to say, baseball is the greatest game in the world. Emil Holmrichhausen, an old sparring partner of Burns, remembers him in a 1957 interview. Quote, he was crazy about baseball and would round up a bunch and play right in the main street. The farmer found a way to combine both sports. He had his own baseball team and would tour the country, wrestling after games. I'll read you an extract from the Daily Times of Davenport, Iowa, dated July 27th, 1911. Quote, DeWitt breaks winning streak of Farmer Burns' team. DeWitt was the scene of revelry yesterday, when the well-known character Farmer Burns and his travelling baseball nine came to town for a mix with the local nine. Joy reigned supreme for the locals, cleaned up their opponents by a close score of 5-4. Five, 500 fans gathered around the diamond to witness what proved to be one of the liveliest sessions of the national pastime, seen here for many a moon. After the game, Farmer Burns and his son gave an exhibition of wrestling, the sport at which Burns won his fame. The wrestling stunt pleased everyone, and after Burns and his son completed their exhibition, Oscar Wayson and Farmer Burns competed. Number 7. Influence Farmer Burns was known for his clean lifestyle, discipline and hard work ethics, things he credited for his success. According to several publications, he completely abstained from alcohol and smoking. Jim O'Neill described Burns as, quote, a high-principled, good-natured man. He loved kids and would always take time to train them. He used his success to inspire and influence the youth to lead healthy lifestyles. He would often give free lectures on physical education and technique, and he would always emphasize the importance of fair play. I'll read you an extract from the Des Moines Register, dated September 28, 1904. Quote, A prominent lady of the town Humboldt recently said, I think he has more influence for good than any other person on the boys of Humboldt. Farmer Burns has really done great good in Humboldt, and the people, the fathers and mothers of the rising generation in our town, owe more than they know to this former master of the Catch as Catch Can Championship of the United States. Number 8. Friendship with James Jeffries James J. Jeffries was a world boxing champion who dominated the heavyweight division for almost a decade. He enjoyed learning the mat game and was good friends with Farmer Burns, who used to spar rough and tumble with the heavyweight. Burns was even at some point in charge of his conditioning training and served as one of his corner men. There was an incident where Jeffries was at his home enjoying a game of cards with the old farmer and some of his friends. When Stanley Ketchell, regarded as one of the greatest world middleweight champions in boxing history, showed up. Jeffries, who had some beef with Ketchell, asked him to leave, but the middleweight champion ignored Jeffries' request. According to an article by the Tennyson, dated July 4th, 1910, quote, Ketchell smiled but did not move away. Jeffries continued playing for a few minutes and then turning to Farmer Burns, 
jerked his head in the direction of Ketchell and said, put that fellow out. Burns got up, took Ketchell by the shoulder and turned him towards the cottage. Walking with the middleweight champion as far as the porch, Burns gave him a mild push towards the steps and Ketchell quietly walked out at the gate and took his car to town. Number 9. Derby Hat I often wonder why Farmer Burns posed with his hat on his chest in photos like this. I later learned that in some articles from the Chicago Tribune, this was part of a stunt to demonstrate how far he could expand his chest. Quote, he could expand his chest and then contract it far enough to slip a 1900 model derby hat under the tape measure. This skill along with the expansion of the muscles in his neck also had functional purposes. Quote, it made it almost impossible for an opponent to gain a hold around Burns' body. When his adversary decided to have a hold, the farmer simply expanded the muscles of the chest and burst loose with explosive force. He would tense the muscles of his neck until his chin vanished and presented a firm straight line from his nose to his waist. Number 10. He never slowed down. Farmer Burns continued scoring impressive victories well into his 50s. Even after retiring, he kept the grind going, never taking time off or allowing himself to get out of shape. At 60 years old, he was still sparring top grapplers on a regular basis. According to the Chicago Tribune, Burns was well past 60 years old when he offered to face the then middleweight champion, Johnny Mayers, for a side bet of $5,000. He also put up a $1,000 forfeit to guarantee his appearance. Ed White, Mayers' manager, refused to accept the match, giving Burns his age as his reason. Farmer Burns never really slowed down. He was still going strong into his 70s, when finally a back injury sidelined him from the mats. This and the passing of his wife probably contributed to the rapid deterioration of his health. The King of Grapplers passed away January the 8th, 1937, at the age of 75. His memory will live forever. Some of you have messaged me asking if the Ripper Catch Wrestling Rash Guard will ever come back. That was a limited edition model, but now I am launching the short sleeve version along with the Ripper Catch Wrestling Shorts. I can't keep this model in stock, so it'll only be available through pre-order. The pre-order period starts today and ends December 31st, 2018. I'll only produce the exact amount of units sold in pre-order, so the production and shipping will take two months and it'll be available to most countries. Lock in yours today, only at GotchFightwear.com. Ripper was the distinction old timers used for catch wrestlers who didn't just look to win, but to inflict as much pain as possible. A brutal, top of the food chain grappler who would always bring the nastiest forms of each hold. The rash guard has many cool little details like the American and British flags and my own version of a heraldic lion on the back inspired by this gentleman. If you want to lock in yours and support this channel, the link for the pre-sale is in the description. To keep up with my upcoming projects, please join our mailing list at gotchfightwear.com. This video was produced by Didos and the World Submission Wrestling Federation. Join the World Submission Wrestling Federation. Visit our official website at submissionwrestlingarts.com.